So the first time I took the MCAT, I scored a 508. The second time I took it, I scored a 518. And the reason I got that big 10 point score jump was for my study habits. My study habits changed drastically. And I will show you in this video how to actually make those changes and improve your score. Number one, develop your plan before starting. You should know how you're gonna study before you actually get into it. Every day of your MCAT study schedule should be planned. You may not necessarily get to everything you planned for that day, but every day you have should be planned. This will keep you accountable and help you know what you need to do every day so you don't fall either into the trap of saying, oh crap, what do I study today? Or just not study. You should have your plan developed before you start studying. Why? Because if you don't have your plan, you might one, not stay consistent, two, you might not take breaks, which usually leads to burnout, or three, feel stressed about what content you should actually be studying. I really suggest making an Excel sheet or whatever you can to track down and write down what you're gonna be studying every single day. In my previous video, I outlined my plan. Feel free to check it out where I have an Excel sheet of my day-to-day -day plan. When you're making your test plan, ask yourself these questions. How many days will I be studying? What resources will I be using to study? What will my average day of studying look like? Between what times will I be studying? I think between eight and four is a good idea because this mimics the timing of the actual exam. Another question is what environment will I be studying in? Will I be distracted this environment? Do I need to find a new place to study? Do I have mandatory things between now when I finish my studying and take my exam that I need to do? Can I schedule those into my study plan? You can and you should. You shouldn't avoid big life things just for this MCAT exam. Go to the wedding, go to your friend's birthday party, but make sure you have those integrated in so that way you don't get behind on your schedule. Again, these integrated breaks don't have to be so big. They should be things like exercising, waking up and sleeping at a normal time, and eating food. Those are all three good things which you should do. Tip number two is give yourself more time than you need. The MCAT is a really important exam. I delayed going and applying to medical school for two years just so I could study and perfect my application before applying. Do not rush into this exam. If you don't feel prepared, take extra time, even if that means delaying your application another cycle. I know that sounds awful. How could you possibly delay your medical school application another cycle? Well, if you really wanna to go to a certain school or if you really wanna make sure you have your best chances of getting into a certain school, you want to make sure that you're providing your best application. You wanna show the medical school admissions boards your best self. That means maybe taking another year to study more for the MCAT and scoring better. I know it's hard to hear, but you have a long path ahead of you. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, that one year is not gonna make a big difference. But the lower MCAT score and therefore a different school you get into or maybe not being accepted to a school at all will make a difference. Tip number three is set a goal. There's this really cool thing called the MSAR that you should probably check out if you haven't seen it, but they list the average MCAT and average GPA for every person that got accepted to a certain medical school. So if I were you, I would check it out, check out your dream school, use it as motivation and say, okay, I know this school that I wanna go to has an average score of a 514. So my goal is a 514. Set this goal because it's a really nice point in your mind and kind of links the MCAT score to the reason you're wanting to do so well at this MCAT score, which is go to the medical school of your dreams and eventually become a doctor, obviously. Tip number four is tell your friends. Tell your friends for a couple of reasons. You wanna let them know that you won't be able to go out as much because you're gonna be spending that time studying and dedicating your time to this big test. Another reason to tell your friends is they will support you with this intense journey you're about to go on. If these are good friends, they'll understand how hard you are working and support you with it. And finally, they're an outlet. They're a really good outlet when you wanna take a break not actually when you want to take a break, when you need to take a break. It's great to have your friends there to kind of take your mind off the MCAT. Number five is focus on your weaknesses. Are you bad at chemistry or the chem phys section? 
put in extra time on chemistry. Some people might say, well, if I'm good at this, shouldn't I focus on this? Well, another way to think about it is, imagine you're scoring a 125 on the chem phys section. And now imagine you're scoring a 130 on the cars section. Do you think it's going to be easier to jump from a 125 to a 130 or a 130 to a 135? So focus on your weak point. It's gonna be easier to increase your score in your weak areas than it is in your strong areas. Some quick little tips for psych social, memorize a lot of terms. Just by doing flashcards for psych social, my score jumped, I think around two points. Another quick tip is memorize the amino acids. Know their structure, know their three letter name, know their one letter name, know their charge, know their full name. I think I got at least four questions that were just easy answers that I could answer right away because I had the amino acids down. What I would do is in that time before that section, which is like the tutorial section, I wrote down every amino acid with all that information on the sheet of paper in front of me. And then when I had one of those questions, it was easy. I just looked at it and bam, answer. Another quick tip is cars is tricky. Uh, don't get disheartened with your score. It will fluctuate. That's okay. Just keep crushing uh, the practice tests. Tip number six is practice testing is more valuable than content revision. It's been repeated over and over again, but it's been repeated over and over again for a good reason. Practice testing will improve your score more than reviewing content. That's for sure from personal experience and from pretty much everyone else on the internet that I've seen and my friends. Integrate full length practice testing as soon and as frequently as you can. I think aiming for eight, full length exams timed mimicking test conditions before you take the real MCAT exam is optimal. Tip number seven, turn your wrong questions into flashcards. Every time you get a question wrong studying, that is an opportunity for an improvement in your score. Don't throw that opportunity away, mark it down create a flashcard out of that wrong question, and then test yourself on that flashcard, on that piece of content over time. If you don't test yourself on this information, you will forget it. One good way to do this is by writing a physical flashcard or putting it onto an Anki flashcard. Anki will test you right before you start to forget that piece of material or you fall off the forgetting curve. Tip number eight is mimic test day when you're studying and taking practice tests as much as possible. When you mimic your test day as closely as possible, you won't feel as overwhelmed or as sketched out when you get into the actual test. So when you mimic it, um, I was replicating my clothing, what I ate, uh, the timing. I think I even drove to the area and then drove home and took the exam at one point. But when you're taking the exam, it's important to have no phone, no human interaction during this time where you're studying because that's cheating. Time your breaks and your lunch breaks the same way the exam times them. This is 90 minutes, 10 minute break, 90 minutes, 30 minute break, 90 minutes, 10 minute break, 90 minutes, done. So time your studying like that, time your practice testing like that. And then when you come to test day, you'll just be like, oh, it's just another day of studying. Oh, it's just another practice test. If you're taking this test mid COVID-19, this might include studying with a mask on. This again will get you in the mindset or the zone to feel comfortable when you're actually taking the exam. Tip number nine is AAMC materials are the most value materials. This is your gold standard of materials. These are the study materials that are actually written by the same people that are writing the exam. So savor this material. Wait a little bit to take the material. You wanna take this test, these, these AMC full length tests, when you're a little bit more ready. So you should be taking them a little bit closer to the end of your exam when you're done the content review and are just hammering out and perfecting your practice testing skills. Final tip is schedule breaks. Don't let this test take over your life. I know it's a big test. I know it's scary, but if you don't schedule breaks, you will just burn out. It's just gonna happen. Maintain consistent and focused study habits and consistent and scheduled breaks. Make sure to exercise, uh, go outside, relax, hang out with your family, and take the day off before your exam. I can't stress this enough. Take the day off before your exam. Don't review anything, chill out, sit outside, hang out with some friends, just take it easy. But yeah, thanks for watching. Keep consistent with your study strategy and take breaks, and I know you will crush this exam. 
Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.